Hey guys, it's Sam. Today we're going to talk a little bit more about vertex distance. So I wanted to show you um, an example of a vertex distance problem where we use the formula. Now I would advocate on the exam for NCLE that you don't use the formula because there's some you know, shortcuts where you should be able to determine the proper answer without having to actually work it out. But it will be beneficial to see how it um, plays out. So let's look at that. So the formula is the perceived power and that's, that's the power that the patient is actually looking through. So it's what you want them to be viewing through. Um, but the perceived power equals the original power, maybe, uh, divided by one plus or minus, um, and we'll get into that, the change in vertex distance. So I'm gonna put change in vertex distance times the original power. I know it looks kind of scary, but the formula itself is not that bad. Um, so let's, let's play one out here. So let's say somebody is refracted and they are a minus 10 sphere. So in the four opter, everything's dialed in, they are seeing well with the minus 10. Again, what you need to remember is that that's at a 12 millimeter distance from the cornea. So with contact lenses, um, that lens is gonna be sitting on the eye meaning that they're gonna view things differently through it. It's the perceived power. And what you really need to remember is that any lens that's fit for contacts is actually gonna be effectively more plus power or less minus. Because as a lens is further from the eye, it behaves more plus. Meaning if someone's a negative 10 out here, when you put that lens on someone's eye, you want it to act like it's acting out here as a minus 10, but you really want maybe a minus nine or more plus for it to, to simulate what they were seeing during the examination, if that makes sense. But let's say that um, our original power is a negative 10. So perceived power equals negative 10. Let's just fill in our formula here. Divide by one, so we have this plus or minus the change in vertex distance. Because we're fitting contact lenses, we're always gonna use plus um, because that uh, the lens that's in the four opter or the eyeglass refraction is always gonna be moving closer to the eye. If it was moving further away from the eye in the example, you'd use minus, but we're gonna do plus. The change in vertex distance. So we're gonna say that the average four opter is about 12 millimeters from the eye. Um, so we're going to do 0 0.012 would be uh, 12 millimeters written out properly for this form. So it's 1 plus zero point zero one two times the original power. So it's really not too bad once you write it out. So this is where you would want a calculator. Um, but do, using our PEMDAS, you're going to multiply these first and you're gonna get 0 0.12 for that. Um, and then you're gonna do within the parentheses, so it'd be one plus 0 0.12, so you get 1.12. And then you're just gonna drop everything down. That would be negative 10 divided by 1.12, and you're gonna get 8.982 if you use your calculator, or negative 8.982. So the perceived power of a negative 10 lens behaves as a negative nine lens would in contact lens form. So that's, I use that example purposely so you can remember that it takes 10 diopters of strength to change just one diopter, and that'll help you on your examination. Another one to remember is that a five diopter lens is a quarter diopter change. And because we know it becomes more plus or less minus, a negative five would act like a negative 4.75. So I wanna go through an example here of something else you'll encounter with vertex distance, getting beyond just the basics. So you will have some prescriptions that have an astigmatism component, so they're spherocylindrical. Um, and, you'll be have to, and you'll have to calculate the vertex distance for them to see what they'd be in contact lens power. So an example would be negative five, negative five, axis 180. So for these examples, you have to calculate the power at both meridians. So first we see negative five 
at 180. So what we want to do is to write these on the optical cross and calculate for the two major meridians separately. So a negative 5 at 180, that's on the horizontal meridian. So we, we know that a negative 5, um, negative 4 is when you need to start compensating for vertex distance. You have to memorize that. But a negative 5, we just said that it just changes a quarter diopter. So we know that negative 5 is going to be a negative 475 because the other thing we remember is that it always becomes more plus or less minus. Now, we're, this is where people get tricked up. What you need to do is find the total power at 90 degrees away or the two, um, the least and the most powerful meridian. So we're going to be looking for the power at the 90 axis. So to do that, we have to transpose the prescription. So we get the strength of negative 10 diopters. So again, we have to write our 90 degree meridian and we have to separately calculate the vertex distance of negative 10. Again, we showed that it takes 10 diopters to do one diopter of change. So a negative 10 would actually behave as a negative nine. So we're gonna just write that on our optical cross here. And an optical cross is an awesome tool because it actually just shows um, what power exists at which meridian. So once you place those on the optical cross, all you have to do is take it off that cross to get your prescription. So what you'll always do is start with your um, most plus number, which is a minus 475, right, is, is more plus than a minus 9. So you're going to write minus 475. I'm going to record the axis that it's at. So I'm just, I'm just writing it down. Then you just have to ask yourself, how far am I traveling? So from a minus 475 to a minus 9, think like your lensometer, your power drum. So I'm traveling another negative 425. So your answer here to calculate the vertex distance in both meridians is minus 475 minus four and a quarter at 180. So this is this prescription that's compensated for vertex distance at that 12 millimeter distance, which is your common four after distance. Um, I hope this video has been helpful. Um, if it has, you know, comment, like, uh, subscribe to the channel. I'll be looking to put up more content and thank you all so much.